Hi there, this is Nursing Tutorials with Joel and in today's video we will be looking at a very very interesting and captivating topic which is titled Blood Grouping. By way of introduction, we all know that human beings are similar in some aspects and different or diverse in other aspects. Blood exists in every human being but at the same time it has been discovered that we all have various types of blood various identity with which we can use and say you are in this blood group she is in this blood group i am in this and we all have a individual blood group what's the importance of knowing your blood group first of all knowing your blood group is an identity is your identity someone meets you on the road and like what's your blood group we are looking for blood to donate you'll be able to tell and say look i am blood group so 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 and they're like okay okay that's good please we need you or we don't need you but when you don't know your blood group you won't be able to give help or render help when there is an emergency so secondly knowing your blood group helps you prevent transfusion reaction at certain stages of our lives we have um, the opportunity or the the situation of visiting the hospital and at some point blood transfusion is needed at this point your blood group will need to be checked because n nobody can just give you blood anyhow so if you know your blood group it will help you and it will also help the person giving the blood although the, the blood is supposed to be tested before being administered so blood group matching helps to prevent transfusion reactions then finally it has been discovered that uh, in checking for paternity tests blood group can also be used very very important now there is a system with which um, blood group is classified that system is called abo system it was introduced in 19 one and since then till now it has helped humans a lot let's look at what we call antigen and antibodies understanding these two things will give us a clear picture of what blood grouping is all about in the red blood cells of every individual there are markers there are substances there there are identities there and those markers are called antigen this antigen they are the key in identifying your blood group so an antigen on a normal day is 10 the foreign substance an antigen is maybe something coming from outside a virus can be an antigen a bacteria can be an antigen because it's a foreign body however naturally occurring there are antigens in your blood red blood cell that are naturally occurring the body does not harm it on the other hand we have antibodies antibodies are you know like immunoglobulins or substances that help fight against foreign bodies that help fight against antigens that are not naturally that are no endogenous in the body we have antigen and we have antibodies the antigens are found on top of the red blood cell while the antibodies are found in the plasma plasma is the fluid the liquid part of blood that's plasma um, we have four classes of blood of uh, identifying blood grouping the first one is the blood group a the blood group b the a b and blood group o so these are the four classes so invariably based on my previous explanation about antigen we can say blood group a has a antigen on the red blood cell meaning that if i have blood group a if i am a it means that there is antigen a naturally occurring on my red blood cells that's my identity if we have blood group B here it means that there is antigen B on my red blood cells if we have blood group AB it means that 
two antigens are naturally occurring on the red blood cells so we have here a b and blood group o means that there is no antigen at all in this set of individuals all right now where does antibodies come to play antibodies as i said is found in the plasma which is the liquid portion of blood so in this blood group a which has antigen a we are not going to have antibody a we can't have antibody a why because if we have remember antibody they are fighters they are like an army they are naturally made for a particular antigen so if this is a blood cell red blood cell with antigen a and we have antibody a here is going to be problem because this antibody will immediately attack this particular a here and destroy the red blood cells and after some minutes the person will die that would, that would be a you know, blood exchange reaction called agglutination so naturally occurring somebody with antigen a will have antibody b so that if anything gain access into the body there's going to be a reaction so we have antigen a moving along with antibody b for the b we have antibody a we can't have anti b here antibody b here. if not this antibody b will fight the cell so we have the opposite so that there can be peace and that's why each of us are still alive now how, how do we now talk about those who have a b two antigens in their cells naturally there is no antibody in such individuals no antibody is there to fight and that's why they are known as the universal recipient meaning that they can receive blood from anybody because there is no fighter there is no army there to fight then how about those who don't have any antigen at all they have antibody A and B that's what plays out here if you have this understanding you will be able to look at the next table with a similar understanding and you will be able to you know talk about or you will be able to ex explain what blood grouping is all about so next we're going to be looking at the table that explains better about blood grouping the antigen the antibody who they can donate to and who they can receive from now we'll be looking at the table that shows the various blood grouping type the antigens they possess the antibodies who they can donate to and re who they can receive from so if you know your blood group this will help you for people who are blood group a they have a antigen as we've learned earlier they have antibody b they can't have antibody a because antibody a will counter this antigen here so they have the opposite for normal balance and peace to reign then these people can donate to their fellow a blood type and people who have a b who are blood group a b why because blood group a b does not have any antibody but they can receive blood from their fellow a and receive from o because o does not have an antigen for the b blood group b they have antigen b antibody a and they donate to their fellow b blood type and blood type a b they only receive blood from b and o for the a b that's people with blood group a b they have the two antigens located on the red blood cells with no antibodies if there was an antibody present or if they receive 
if the if the if there's an antibody present here that is an anti a or anti b it's going to counter a and b then they donate blood only to a b and they receive blood from everywhere why because they don't have a particular antibody so people who are a b are termed universal recipients they receive blood from a b a b and o then for blood group o we have antigen o and they have since there's no antigen here they have both ant antibody a and antibody b they donate blood to everybody because there is no antigen however they only receive blood from their fellow uh, o blood type so the o group they are termed universal donor because they can give blood to anybody so if you have blood group o kudos to you because you can give blood to anybody you are a sacrificial giver and that's a nice one so this is all about blood grouping i will advise if you don't know your blood group try and know your blood grouping if you already know your blood type you've seen what who you can donate to and who you can't donate to who you can receive from and who you can receive from so with this we've come to the end of this study for today i would like you to subscribe to this channel for more videos it's purely educational as we all know knowledge is power so you have knowledge you have power thank you for watching do have a wonderful day